Infections of Bone and Joints. This lecture is about musculoskeletal infections. A specific infection could have a specific infecting agent or a specific presentation or a specific treatment. I'm going to try to present the most common types of infection that probably has a specific thing about it. The majority of orthopedic surgical site infections are caused by staph aureus. Paronychia. Paronychia can be acute or chronic. What is acute paronychia? It's infection of the nail fold. It is a common hand infection, usually affect a single digit. The nail fold will be tender, red, swollen, sometimes fluctuant with pus. It can happen from injury or trauma in the peronychial fold, like hang nail, nail pitting, manicuring, or thumb sucking. Staph aureus is the most common organism. If the condition is early, you do warm soaks. It can give antibiotics, clindamycin, and augmentin. Surgery for an abscess. You do an IND with partial or total nail removal plus antibiotics. Chronic paronychia is different than acute paronychia. It is a fungal infection of the nail fold. Candida albicans is the most common one. The infection is more in diabetics, and multiple fingers can be involved, and this infection does not respond to antibiotics. The infection is rare and can be recurrent. There is no pus. The nail fold is swollen, inflamed, red, tender. There is no abscess. It occurs in people that work with water environment and chemical irritants, such as dishwashers, bartenders, gardeners, housekeepers, or in dealing with laundry. Risk factors are diabetics and people on steroids, and people that take retroviral drugs like indinavir, which causes paronychia in HIV-positive patients and the condition resolve when we stop the medication. The treatment, avoid water and use topical antifungal agents, myconazole, and you can use topical steroids. And surgery is the last resort, which can involve marsibilization in severe resistant cases. Felon. What is a felon? Felon is an abscess of the volar bulb of the fingertip. It can cause pain and swelling. It occurs from penetrating trauma, such as needles or splinters. The bulb has multiple small compartments of subcutaneous fat separated by septi between the dorsal pharynx the bone, and the dermis. So the volar distal pulp is septated, got multiple septums and multiple compartments. And when pus occurs, there will be swelling, and the pressure that's built inside the compartment will lead to multiple little compartment syndromes. That will lead to vascular compromise and necrosis of the tissue. It also may lead to osteomyelitis of the bone or flexor tenosynovitis. Staph is the most common organism. Treatment you will do incision and drainage. Do not violate the flexor tendon sheath or the DIP joint. Try to break up the septi to decompress the infection. If there is no foreign body in the finger, you will do the mid-axial incision or the J incision, and you're going to leave the wound open. If there is a foreign body like a splinter or a thorn, you will do the volar longitudinal incision. 
Try to avoid the fish mouth incision. It will lead to unstable finger pulp. Try to avoid the double longitudinal incision because it may lead to injury of the neurovascular bundle. Herpetic whittle. It occurs from herpes simplex virus. It is a self-limited disease. It often involves the tip of the fingers. It occurs from contact with oral and tracheal secretions and from self-inoculation. It's seen in dentists, respiratory therapists, anesthesiologists, and also can affect toddlers when children suck their thumb. The patient will have burning pain and vesicles on the finger. The vesicles can be grouped together with inflammation and redness at the base. The fluid is usually clear and not purulent. Gram is stain usually negative. Diagnosis can be Zanuck test. You can see giant cells. What is the treatment? A cyclovir and no surgery needed. Surgery can make the situation worse. Sickle cell can be associated with Salmonella osteomyelitis. Staph aureus is the most common organism. HIV AIDS. Patient with CD4 count less than 200 or patients with viral load in excess of 10,000 will have a tenfold higher rate of infection than individuals without AIDS. How about pseudomonas? Nail foot puncture in children. The IV drug abusers. Pseudomonas infection is responsible for the majority of the osteomyelitis following a nail puncture through the shoes. Pseudomonas is the most characteristic for this infection. Treatment. IND. Remove the foreign bodies inside and give the patient antibiotics, but he must do an IND. In a patient that has chronic osteomyelitis and a draining sinus for years, rule out squamous cell carcinoma. Get a biopsy of the sinus and the skin. Charcot or osteomyelitis. A diabetic patient with draining sinus of the foot for several months. You don't know if it is a charcoal foot or if it is an osteomyelitis. Do you look alike on the x-ray? MRI will not be helpful. It may be difficult to differentiate osteomyelitis from charcoal, although elevation of the foot may help in cases of charcoal. That patient has plantar ulcer on the forefoot. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna probe that ulcer. And if the probe goes down to the bone, it's probably osteomyelitis and it will need debridement. How about fungus infection? It happens in sick, malnourished, old people with chronic illness. People that are on IV antibiotics for a long time and maybe getting parenteral nutrition. Erysipelas. Erysipelas is group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. It affects the superficial layers of the skin. It has geographic demarcation or distribution over the extremity or over the face. And the treatment is antibiotics. Necrotizing fasciitis, polymicrobial, but there is a group A strep involved. Necrotizing fasciitis is rapidly progressive infection, affects the fascia early, and then the toxins liquefy the tissue underneath. The edema and the pain is more than what appears at the surface of the skin. It looks like a cellulitis, but really not a cellulitis. Underneath the fascia can be a really terrible infection, which can involve all the tissues 
including the muscles, without even having a smoking gun mark on the skin surface. The blisters and the bully are late findings. If you are in doubt and you don't know if it is cellulitis or necrotizing fasciitis, do a biopsy by doing an incision going down to the fascia and see if the fascia and the muscles are involved. If the fascia is involved, then you probably have a necrotizing fasciitis. Hepatitis C is an associated risk factor for necrotizing fasciitis and the prognosis of these patients are worse. The treatment for this condition is emergency aggressive debridement. The mortality rate is high, can reach up to 25%, and it depends on early diagnosis. The mortality improves by early diagnosis and treatment. So the treatment is emergency aggressive debridement and antibiotics. How about gas gangrene? Gas gangrene occurs from Clostridia perfringens. Gas gangrene is an inero gram-positive bacilli. In gas gangrene, there are triad of symptoms. In gas gangrene, the patient will have pain, tachycardia, and crepitus. There will be linear streaks of gas in the tissue with unexplained tachycardia. The treatment is wide depletment and leave the wound open plus antibiotics. We usually give penicillin G and the clindamycin. There is a difference between Clostridia perfringens and Clostridia difficile. Clostridia difficile causes C. diff. Clostridia difficile can be caused by antibiotics, especially clindamycin, unexplained postoperative fever, leukocytosis, watery diarrhea may indicate infection by C. diff. You will treat it by an oral metronidazole or flagell. Human bite infection can be caused by Echinella crodens and the treatment is augmenting. If the wound goes to a joint, you're going to have to clean and debride the joint in the operating room. Partonella hensali can be seen in cat scratch disease and in HIV patients. The cat scratch disease sometimes can give what appear to be swollen lymph nodes. It may be confused with a tumor, but you don't need to biopsy it. And that is different than cat bite. Dog and cat bites Pestrella maltosida. The cat bite is deeper and sharper, and it causes deep injuries. And 50% of them will need surgery. Now we go to the dog bite. The dog bite has an average of five organisms, and one of them is Pestrella multicida, another one Pestrella canis. The dog really causes a lot of tissue damage. It's not like a small little puncture wound of the cat, and the injuries can be occult. The dog bite is just incredible force. Tearing of the tissue is visible, it's obvious. If the dog bite doesn't need treatment, you can treat it by antibiotics alone. The dog bite, you have at least five organisms. And one will stand out, the same one, like the cat bite, Pastrella multicida. And the treatment is augmenting. Phantom Valentine Leucocidin. Cytotoxin that is usually present in community-acquired MRSA and not in a hospital-acquired MRSA. PVL has the ability to lyse the white blood cells and cause tissue necrosis and rapid abscess formation.
The PVL positive strains of community acquired MRSA are associated with a high incidence of DVT, septic emboli, sepsis, and multi system organ failure. Mycobacterium marinum. It is the most common atypical mycobacterium that can cause infection in humans. It is found in salt and fresh water. It is an acid fast bacilli. The wrist and the hand are affected in about 50% of cases. It may cause skin and soft tissue infections after skin abrasion. The patients are exposed to aquatic environments such as aquariums and swimming pools. The disease often occurs following cleaning of fish tanks. The bacilli enters the body through scratches and abrasions, causing deletions in the tissue. The diagnosis is usually delayed because the condition is rare and the history of aquatic exposure is usually not obtained. The clinical findings, the hand and wrist are commonly involved. There will be painful swelling of the hand, subcutaneous granules, masses, nodules, ulcers, non-caseating granulomas. It may present as chronic tenosynovitis of the hand. It affects the extensors more than the flexors. It can cause a TB-like disease in fish. The chronic skin lesion is sometimes called a swimming pool granuloma or fish tank granuloma in humans. How does the bacteria grow? The bacteria grows in low temperature culture at 30 degree centigrade. It grows on Lowenstein Jensen medium. It requires lower temperature and longer period of the intubation up to six weeks or more. Treatment Oral Antibiotics Antimicrobial Therapy, Ethambutol and Rifampin if diagnosed early. Minocycline and Clarithromycin has been described. Surgery is done in late stages and in deep infection. Surgery entails synovectomy and debridement in addition to oral antibiotics for approximately three months. Another entity of atypical mycobacterium, it's called Mycobacterium avium intracellular. It occurs in terminal AIDS patient, or it also can occur in a non-HIV patient. Special culture for bacteria. Some of the bacteria are grown in a special culture. Like Kingle kingi will grow in a blood culture. Domyobacterium avium, Middlebrook medium. The E. coli, Loria bertani medium. The Neisseria gonorrhea, chocolate agar. If the specimen comes from a sterile source like a joint fluid, but if the specimen comes from a contaminated source such as a vaginal swab or urethral swab, then the median will be Thayer Martin agar medium. How about the Vibrio volni ficus? I call it Vibro. Silfish in brackish, gram negative rods, septicemia and gastroenteritis. The wound infection will be hemorrhagic bully, subcutaneous bleeding, necrosis. The treatment is debridement and broad spectrum antibiotics. How about Lyme's disease? The bug bite, spirochete, Borrelia burgdorferi. It lives in white-tailed deer. It is transmitted by the bite of an infected tick. 
early, you will get the pulse eye, which is erythema migrans. In orthopedic, we get the chronic inflammatory arthritis. The knee will be swollen, but not too painful. You can get Bill's palsy. Treatment is antibiotics. If you are less than 8, you will get amoxicillin. More than 8, you get doxycycline. Because in little kids, the doxy will create a staining of the teeth. So don't use it in little kids. The doxy will work on the protein synthesis of the bacteria, 30S ribosomes. The period of antibiotics will be between 3 to 6 weeks. Gonococcal arthritis occurs in young adults. It is the most common septic arthritis in a young, healthy, sexually active person. It can cause migratory septic joints. It's caused by intracellular gram-negative diblococci, and the treatment is antibiotics, no surgery. The antibiotic is ceftriaxone. Sporotrichosis. Sporotrix is a fungus. It happened on rose growers. The injury happened from thorns and from splinters. You can get granulomas, nodules, then ulcers, lymphatic is spread. The HE stain will show asteroid body. The treatment is debridement and the amphotericin because it's fungus and potassium iodide. Other infections. The newborn will get infection two to four weeks with group B strep. The hips and knees, prosthetic joints, will get infection with the staph epi or staph aureus. The shoulders, prosthesis, and rotator cuff repair will get infection by P. acne. P. acne is a gram-positive anaerobe bacilli. P. acne will require culture for longer period, maybe up to two weeks. Brody's abscess, probably a staph aureus. Follow suspect infection. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis may look like an infection, but it is not. In young kids, it is a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. When you aspirate fluid from a joint, do a cell count, culture, and try to identify crystals for gout or pseudo gout. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.